going first. Okay. Get the thumb going first. So your very first move as a fingerstyle player should be just spelling out chords and getting the thumb working on its own. Because what's going to happen is the moment you start bringing the fingers in, they're going to want to play what the thumb is playing because that's just the nature of your motor skills and how your hands are designed. What you've got to do is stop that from happening. And, and so the very first thing that I teach people is just spelling out chords. So we put our fingers down like that and we leave them there. We don't have them do anything. The thumb now has to play... That's what the thumb does when you're, I'm playing tunes like... doing all that but I'm not thinking about the thumb when I'm playing it what I'm thinking about is you see what I'm saying Thumb is taking care of all the backing, so you, that's where you got to start. So, your first exercise is this one. Now, I want to tell you that the rule, the rule in fingerstyle is this: the first note of every bar should be the root note of the chord you're in. So, if you're in E, your first note should be E. E. to A, your first note should be an A. Same thing when you switch to B, your first note should be a B. Okay? So you don't swap them around and go... You know, you'll, people will be going... <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that in the audience. You know? um, okay, so you get your thumb doing that. got to do if you're just starting out find some chords that you know and that relate to each other like E A and B C F and G uh, A flat C sharp E flat if you want to get technical man <laughs> and and play those around and get your thumb doing that without doing anything with your fingers now the exercise that I like to teach to get the fingers started is this and it's it's straight on the beat with your fingers and so the, the fingers spell out the chord like that while the thumb keeps going so you have the thumb going like this and then you spell out the notes That sounds like kindergarten because that's exactly what it is. But let me tell you, if you've never done this before, it's going to be a <laughs> it's going to be a mental conundrum. It's going to be this huge hurdle for you to get over. are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that while the thumb keeps going. Right. Now, 
The next thing I like to do is, is put an accent. While keeping the thumb going straight. a little harder, right? That's, but that's the beginnings of independence. Also, I use another exercise, which is going, uh, the, the, the fingers are going, uh, going. So they're playing uh, an anticipated beats against the straight time of the thumb. That's the beginnings of independence, right? Now, then we, we practice that everywhere until we, we can actually do that. Then we move on to learning a song. And um, there's, there's several songs that I, I used to always teach freight train first, this song. It's a good song to start with too. But I wrote a song last week, which is a good teaching song called The Beginner's Blues. <laughs> okay? And it, what it has in it is several uh, uh, interesting things to do with, with your little finger, to help you get your little finger working, because at the same time you're learning all this new finger style stuff, We've got to get your little pinky working a lot more because it's your weakest link, okay? Your little finger is probably your weakest point. So we need to start to get him working. So the beginner's blues goes. simple sounding blues three chords but I'm going so the thumbs doing that and then the fingers are doing So that's got our pinky working. We're playing a melody that's slightly anticipated and the thumb's playing the straight walking bass there. So. Okay. And then there are other tunes that, I, that I, I teach which are, are beginner's songs. The two that I really enjoy to teach are Creole Bell and Buffalo Girls. Right? Buffalo Girls is a good one because it's now going to... I do it in G and what it does is it gives our hand a different centre. We're now playing the bass with our second finger instead of they're open, we're playing here in G, and Buffalo Girls goes... is in the key of C, the Spanish key, C, senor, and um, uh, it goes like this. So, now, Creole Bell, I, I, I teach in C, but I start everybody off with the capo on the fourth fret, so we're actually playing it in the key of E, right? 
using the same C positions but with the capo. And the reason I do this is because this is the first song I try to teach people to bring your thumb over the top. Because if you can do that, it's going to free you up to play nice open notes and things while you're in, the, in, in an F position. Most of us don't like to do it because it's difficult, you know. But once you get used to it, you'll find it becomes second nature to you. So what I do is I start all my students with the capo on the fourth fret because the frets are closer together. The neck is smaller up there and will allow you to start getting used to bringing your thumb over like this. those notes in it's just a little harder it's better if you can get your thumb over and so I usually start people with that and then once you got used to it and the feeling of the neck up here then you move down two frets Everybody's starting to get used to it and everything. And then we take the capo off now and we play it in C. songs that I suggest you learn. Most of you will film me doing it now, so you, you won't need to go out and buy the DVD. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that, that's the best way to get started. So you start with just the thumb, then these simple on the beat exercises, then the slightly anticipated exercises while keeping the thumb going, spell out the chords, try the uh, chords in different keys while keeping the thumb going, and then learn these songs. The Beginner's Blues, Freight Train, Creole Bell, Buffalo Girls. They're all good places to start. Now give yourself time. Set your goals, your milestones along the way. If you can play... If you can make that sound, boom, chick, boom, chick, in time, making it sound good, that's a big milestone for you, your first hurdle that you've got over. Now, if you can spell out the notes and keep the thumb going, which is going to be difficult, and you <coughs> will fumble around like a beginner, just the way I did, and everybody else does. But you keep at it, go slowly, you'll get it. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So each one should be seen by you as your milestone, as your goal to get to. Take it slowly, there's no hurry. You're not in a hurry. What you're trying to do is, is get this right. And so if you do those things and then slowly work out the songs, bar by bar. Look at this. Uh, couldn't be simpler, yet when you first start doing that, you, you're going to find, particularly because you're using your little finger and your third finger a lot, and this one is your anchor point, that's unusual. But you need this stuff to start getting your left hand used to doing that, you know? So you've got to give yourself time. Tell me, on your right hand, uh, you're, you're... I'm anchoring my pinky a lot. Yeah, use it as an anchor. Don't float around in the ocean being blown away, by being blown around by the waves and the wind. Anchor down and be solid. 
Okay. Sometimes. Yes, sir. Are you killing the bass uh, with your left hand? It sounds like you do all the bass. Notice the angle, my thumb pick is not on a side angle, and I'm not playing up here like most people who start out playing finger style, especially if they've come from a folk or classical background, they want to play here. It doesn't sound any good and it's useless to you. You need, you need to have control, and where you need your thumb to be is parallel with the string. You see that? My thumb is straight like, like that. I can feel the, the pushback of the string on my thumb, and I can feel that my thumb is totally where it needs to be. It's in control, it's, it's got uh, um, power to it there. I'm not floating around like... You see how weird that looks? I see hundreds of videos nearly every day of my life of people saying, can you look at my video and tell me if I'm any good? And all of them are like, that. It's, like it's so painful to watch, you know? <laughs> but all you've got to do is get your thumb straight like that. That's how you're going to get the sound and it's how you're going to get the control. That's what you need. You don't need to be floating around here. You need to be anchored down. Right, that's it. Everybody got it? You can't do it yet, but do you understand it? Yes. Good. That's important. Anybody have any questions? I'm a little more. I know I'm working on one of your songs, and yeah. it looked like you took the thumb and hit it on the fifth string, too. How often do you do that? What? What? No, when you're, you're playing with your thumb, I mean your, your <laughs> over the top. left hand right. coming over the top. You mean that? You're hitting the fifth string with your thumb sometimes, too. Yeah. yeah. That's a Merle Travis thing. Yeah. yeah, that's how Merle gets that sound. He brings the thumb over the top and then just kind of chugs down on the thumb. That's how he gets that kind of honky-tonk sound. Travis E seventh. Look at this. I call it a fistful of E. <laughs> so, that's how Travis used to play. The opening phrase of the original version of Nine Pound Hammer from folk songs from the hills, one of the most important fingerstyle albums ever recorded by Mel Travis. And the opening phrase is this. It sounds like a piano. And he's got the third in the bass, so it's in E, so he's got, then he's got a seventh, then the third. That's his E7. So he goes. I discovered that chord because I met Tom Bresch. If you want to know about playing this style and where it comes from and all the details, look at Tom Bresch. He's the best at it there is, okay? Especially all the Travis stuff, because that's his daddy. And, and he, he knows it better than anybody. That's Tom so, Bresch. Tom Bresch, yeah, B-R-E-S-H. 
His tom is T-H-O-M. So uh, I can highly recommend the Bresh man. He really knows all this stuff so well. There's another guy named Eddie Pennington who is faithfully recreates a lot of Mel Travis's stuff, if you're interested in Travis, you know. And uh, it's a good, good place to start. But what I've given you already is really the basics to get you going. One of the interesting things that my wife pointed out, because she's a guitar player too, and she had to learn how to play all this stuff because she was interested in it when she was younger. And she said one of the things that, that really helped her was actually slowing it right down to a, you know, a real slow pace. And she realized that things like the opening passage of Windy and Warm, which most people know, It was handy, for, it was good for her to know that when she slowed it right down,